We're going to be in Luke the chapter 2, Luke chapter 2 tonight. Luke chapter 2. Starting in verse 40. And the child grew and waxed strong in the spirit and wisdom. And the grace of God was upon him. And his parents went up to Jerusalem every year at the time of the Passover. As was the custom. And when he was 12 years old, they went up to the feast of Passover. And when the days were accomplished, they returned. But the child Jesus remained behind, and Joseph and his mother knew it not. But supposing that he was with them, he went a day's journey. And they began to seek him uh, among their relatives and uh, among their acquaintances. And when they found him not, they returned to Jerusalem. And after three days, they found him in the temple with the teachers and doctors and law, both asking questions and listening. And everyone was amazed at his understanding. And his mother came to him and said, Son, why have you done this to us? Your father and I have been seeking you sorrowing. And he said, why have you been seeking me? Didn't you know I'd be about my father's business? And she understood not what he said, but treasured all those things in her heart. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we're thankful for this evening, our Father, for each and every one who's come out. For those who have sang the songs of the faith. And Father, for those that have the open Bibles and are ready to hear the word of God. And Father, we pray tonight if there's anybody outside the body of Christ that they will not leave here in the same condition. And not only that, Father, sometimes we pray for that. We pray for that. But we need to pray for those who have claimed Jesus as their Lord and Savior. But they're not on the same page. They're not like they used to be. Not fired up. Not seeking to climb that mountain. Win that battle. Swim that sea. In other words, make a difference for the kingdom. Father, we pray for those who are in that situation. But God, we pray for this congregation that that we might understand that there's only one way. There's one Lord, one faith, one baptism. There's only one Lord. And that Lord's name is Jesus. And Father, it's in his name that I pray these things. Amen. Amen. And the child grew and waxed strong in the spirit and wisdom. And the grace that God was appointing, that blows my mind. Here it is, the Son of God, the Savior of the world. I, I know he's, he's young in that situation, but the Bible says that he grew. Not only did he grow, he grew in the grace and knowledge, and he grew in wisdom. Well, I thought he was already there. I mean, when we, we, we get the thing, we get the thing, we say, well, he's there. He's already there. That's what amazes me about Christians, you know. If Jesus didn't already think he was there, how come we think we're already there? That's right. How come we think we already got the doctrine in theology? 
How come we don't, we don't think we need to be in the assembly? We don't need to meet around the Lord's table. We don't need to be in Bible study. We don't need to pray. We don't need to read our, our Bibles. we got that idea in our head. If Jesus Christ grew in the grace and knowledge and wisdom, i got a kind of an idea. Now, I may be wrong. Don't quote me on this. But I think we need to grow too. Amen. I know one thing. I'm not there yet. The, the only time I'll be there yet is when I hear, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of the Lord. That's when I, that's when I know I got there. Until that, I don't care how much I study, how much I, I, I memorize the Word of God, I still haven't got there. When you start thinking you haven't got there, you ain't there. Amen. You're not there. And the Bible says his parents went up to the Feast of Passover every year. They set the example. Listen, listen, parents, whatever you're doing, the most important thing you can do is sell out to God. That is absolutely the most important thing. All the money in the world, all the things in the world, all the things in there will not help you when your child is gone and when they're gone, they're gone. Yeah, we had, well, we still have. <laughs> and they have them like, oh. <laughs> Some of them never want to leave home, you know what I mean? <laughs> but we had five kids, and one of them was late. What I mean by late, unexpected. He just showed up! <laughs> Me and Judy can't figure out how that happened, you know? <laughs> but nine years after... Here comes Christopher. And he's something else. I'll tell you what, that is a joy. Christopher was the joy, you know, because listen, you're all struggling to get the other ones up. And they're all fighting and feuding and fussing. You know what I'm talking about? I mean, when you've got five kids and they're all, I mean, they're within two a year and a half to two years apart. And, and, and he's, you know, we get in the car. People don't understand it. I'll tell you what the preacher, see, you guys don't understand it. You need to get this. You need to get this if you don't get anything else. Sunday morning, we get in the car. And I'm preaching that Sunday morning. He's looking at me. <laughs> she touched me. And I, I quit looking at him. Quit touching her. Whatever you do, quit that. Quit that. I'm tired of it, you know. Hey, here they think when we come here to church, you know, we're going down there. I'm telling you what, when we go on a trip, I'd be going down I-75 and pull off the exit. Who touched you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And then I do my godfather thing. I ain't to hurt you. <laughs> but it'll be my pleasure. <laughs> In about five minutes, I'm going to hurt you bad. <laughs> yeah, we, we pull off the interstate. I get out of the car because the worst thing we have is suburban. And they sit in the back, you can't reach them. <laughs> and guess what? They know it. They know it. So then you got to pull off, get out of the car, go to the back door, open up the back door, climb over the seat, and grab a hold of them and talk. <laughs> Except we didn't talk, you know. I'm going to hurt you if you don't shut up and you don't quit that, you know. Set the example. Mary and Joseph set the example. Now here's the key, and I, you know, I don't want to cause trouble in the congregation, but what kind of example are you setting? What kind of example are you setting for your children? Listen, if you're not faithful, guess what? They ain't going to be. 
If you don't pray with them, guess what? They're not going to pray. If you aren't there to hear their problems and you're going this way and that way and every way and you're not sitting down at the dinner table with them, supper table with them, that's one thing we did. Everybody, it doesn't matter what it was, they aren't nuking, us, nuking their supper. In other words, we're going to be at the table. We're going to have prayer. We're going to ask them what their day, what happened in their day, what went on. What can we help them with? Mary and Joseph set the example. You know how they set the example? Here they are, they're coming up to the feast of the Passover. And the Bible says then when he was 12 years old, he went up to the feast of the Passover. Remember Bar Mitzvah, Bat Mitzvah? That's when he was able to partake of the, of the Passover. Was during that time. That's why they taught him. In other words, when they left home, who'd they take with them? Jesus. <coughs> when you tell leave home, who do you take with you? When I leave home on Monday morning, you know who I take with me? Jesus. I always take Jesus. They set the example for him. And so here he is, they take Jesus, and when the days were accomplished, the Bible says when the days were accomplished, they went home. Joseph and his mother went home. And the child Jesus tarried behind. You know what that sounds like? Sounds like church Christ. In other words, listen, listen folks, this is what we do. We, we got a thing like, like we used to have at work with a tie card. We come in the front door. That's what we used to do, you know, when I tried to get them to come to church. I get them in a car and they're fighting. We stop about three times before we get there. You know, I have to go back and straighten them up. But when we come into church, you know what we did? Holy, holy. And everybody's saying, why can't you kids be like Spinati's kids? They don't know that I just ripped their heads off. <laughs> of course I did it in Christian love. <laughs> you know, they come in like that and everybody, oh, well, look at that Spinati family. Listen, I don't care what family you are, you're going to have trouble. Amen? Amen. What it is. Don't get so high and mighty like you're walking on water. There's only one that, well, there's two walking on water. And he forgot that he was walking on water, so he forgot about Jesus, and he started to sink down, buddy. So what we do is come in the front door of this building. We don't do it, I mean, with physical things, but we do mentally. We, we clock in, and then when we get in there, we sing the songs of faith, you know. We sing, oh, how I love Jesus. Marching to Zion. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful time. And then we get out in the parking lot and you're going down the road and somebody pulls out in front of you. Awesome. Oh yeah, that stupid idiot. I'll, I'll knock his face in. Pull him over here. I'll rip his head off in Christian love. You know? <laughs> <laughs> here was Mary and Joseph. They took Jesus to church. But they left him there. How many people are leaving? How many families are leaving Jesus at church? I'll pick him up when I get back next week. You know, it won't be bad. And they took a day's journey. And they begin to seek him. They begin to look for Jesus. Anybody see Jesus? Well, Mary, whose kid is it? Never mind whose kid is it. Where is he? You know? Where did Jesus go, you know? They begin to seek Jesus. And you know where they seek Jesus at? 
their relatives. You know how many people are trying to find Jesus through their relatives? A bunch! I talk to them every day. You know, when I start talking about the plan of salvation, what do they say? Well, my aunt said this. My aunt, my, my aunt Ethel said it. You didn't need to be baptized. What, what, what happened to Jesus? You know, they, they begin to seek Jesus in every place else, but where they need to seek Jesus at. And the worst thing is, every time you go to a relative, it's something else. I'm going to tell you one thing. Whenever I get in a Bible study with a family, listen, you can count on it. You can mark it on the wall. You can get ready for it. Because something there's going to be a, a knock at the door. And the dipstick neighbor's coming. <laughs> who knows more about Jeopardy than she does the Bible. And they'll come in the, the thing and I'll say, oh, whenever I hear a knock at the door, I say, it's trouble. It's trouble in River City. I tell Judy, I look at Judy and say, it's trouble in River City, baby. You better get ready. Because <laughs> they come in with their, they know all about the Bible. Which they know not about. But here he is. She goes into the, goes in there and asks the relatives. Now, if you thought that was bad, how about acquaintances? I go ask some acquaintance about that. Yeah, there's a guy that lives down the street. What's his name? I don't know what his name is, but he lives down the street. Well, go ask him. Hey, Herman. What, what about that Acts 238? What, what's, what's that talking about? Don't worry about that, son. Don't worry about that. You all right. Everything's okay. They begin to seek Jesus among their relatives and their own acquaintances. And I want you to hit this because this is the point. If you're seeking Jesus among your relatives and acquaintances, he ain't there most of the time. If you sit in front of my wife, relative, you know, the Godfather that I look at Jimmy, no problem. You're all right. What you getting all excited about? I mean, come on. Come on. It's okay. I remember my uncle. <laughs> my uncle Benny. Oh, man. <laughs> he remembers about Benny. My uncle Benny was something else, man. They, my mom and dad, they'd be playing cards. And of course, it's a heathen. We're heathens. They're gambling, see. And anytime Benny got a good hand, he'd go, oh. He couldn't ever figure out why everybody else dropped. <laughs> His uncle Benny. My dad, I tell you, my dad, what my dad would do on Christmas, my, he'd bring my uncle Benny in. And he'd get my Uncle Benny in, that's five kids that line up. And he'd say to Ben, give me your billfold. And Ben would go, oh! <laughs> and Daddy would get, get his billfold. I'll never forget, get his billfold. He, my dad would go, and Ben would say, Julia, what you doing that for? He said, the moss needs some air. <laughs> they, need some, they need some oxygen. <laughs> and then he'd start passing out the money to us. Benny. That's what happens when you go to the relatives. And when they found him not, they returned to Jerusalem. Listen, if you want to find Jesus, you've got to go back to Jerusalem. If you want to find Jesus, you've got to go back to Acts chapter 2. That's right. Verse 38. Men and brother, what shall we do? Repent and be immersed, every one of you, in the free for the forgiveness of sin. Receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, for this promise is unto you and to all oh, that are far off. Even as many as our Lord our God shall call them. With many other words, he'd exhort them. Save yourself from this wicked generation. Now, I thought of something when I was doing this sermon. 
They go back to Jerusalem. And where's the last place they look? In the temple. They're three days looking for him all over the city. What happened? What happened? We have forgot Jesus sometimes ourselves. And we start going our own way, doing our own thing. Listen, man, when you get outside the bounds of the Lord Jesus Christ, you're starting to get in trouble. And when you talk to somebody who's always in trouble, they'll say, oh, I I'm all right. I've had more people say I'm all right that's fall out of the Lord Jesus Christ. When, you, when somebody comes to you and says, how are you doing? And you're not doing all right, you need to tell them you're not doing all right because you need something. Because pretty soon you're going to be outside the Lord Jesus Christ. And you're done. So the last place they look is the temple. Unbelievable. And then they came to him and said, Son, why have you done this to us? Your father and I have been seeking. And he said, Didn't you know I must be about my father's business? And what did she say? She didn't say nothing, but she understood not what he said. Now listen, I want to grab your attention here because that's very important. This is a Kodak moment. Was this the same Joseph and Mary that the angel came to? Is this the same Joseph and Mary? Not that this is only 12 years. 12 years difference between the birth of Christ. Between the angels coming down. Between the shepherds coming. 12 years. That's all it is. Listen, it doesn't take long for you to get outside the Lord Jesus Christ. You just start sloughing off. You're not faithful in the attendance. Listen, man, I'm going to tell you something. Jesus died for you. Yeah. Jesus got everything in my, in my attention, not because I'm preaching. When I wasn't preaching, I was still there every time. Why? Because it's the number one thing to do in your life. It's the number one family thing to do in your life. Right. You keep your kids in church. That's what you need to do. You need to take all the time you can. It'll take your work. It'll be sweat. It'll be all kinds of things. But when you get done, guess what? You have a godly family. What happened to Mary and Joseph in the Hosanna in the highest? What happened with the shepherds coming? What happened when the, the wise men came later on to the house? In 12 years, they forgot about that old holy night. How long's it been since you forgot about this? When you were immersed in the Christ. How, 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 how long's it been since you forgot about that? About coming out of that baptistry, about uniting your family, about being excited, about being the Lord. How, when's the last time that happened? Listen, if it happened to Joseph and Mary, it can happen to you. And as long as I've been preaching, I know it's happened to a lot of people because that's exactly what happened. They get used to it. It becomes mundane. Don't ever let it become mundane in your life. Always put it number one because that's the only thing that's going to matter. When you get to that judgment bar of God, it's not going to matter what your 401k looks like. It isn't going to look like what your, your car looks like. The only thing that's going to matter is the blood. That's right. 
and your faithfulness. I'm not chancing that. I sold out to Jesus. And brothers and sisters, you need to be sold out. Because I hate to tell you this, but I'm going to anyway. God ain't playing games. If he took down Sodom and Gomorrah, he'll take down you. If he took down Sodom and Gomorrah, he'll take down America. We need him. He doesn't need us. Now he wants us. He went to enough trouble to get us, didn't he? Gave his own son to die upon the cross of Calvary and we going to go by there. What, what I wish I could do, what I wish I could do is take all of you to hell for about five minutes. If I could just pack you all up on the nearest Greyhound bus <laughs> and take you to hell for five minutes, guess what? You'd be here Sunday morning early. You'd be here Sunday night right on time. You'd be here midweek. There wouldn't be anything that you couldn't do to help out to make a difference in the kingdom. You stop feuding, fussing, and fighting or whatever because I've been in congregation where they're fighting all the time and then I'm telling you like the, the, the Bodines, the Clampers and the Bodine man fighting all the time. I was in the church in Indiana. I went in the church in Indiana, man. And I didn't know what I was getting into when I took that church. But it was the Clampers and the Bodine, man. One sat on one side and they sat on the other one. And I was in the middle, man. And they asked me, they said, who are you with? And I said, I'm telling you who I'm with. Jesus is who I'm with. I'm not with you. And I'm not with them. I'm with the Lord. You see, when you come from a background like I come from, them people don't scare me at all. You know that? <laughs> when, 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 when my uncle used to make cement tennis shoes, you know? You, you not, don't worry about that anymore. You, you don't worry about that, so you can't scare me. It doesn't do that. Because you know what? You know what? This is what you need to take. And no matter what happens, God will see you through. That's right. No matter what anybody does to you, no matter how they undercut you, you'll always come out on top. Mary and Joseph forgot about that old happy day. And I pray tonight. That you won't forget about the old happy day. I remember my day. March 17th. 1970. That was my old happy day. My wife was baptized maybe two to three weeks before I was scared to tell me. But you know what? The greatest day of my life was that day. If you aren't sold out to Jesus, you need to get there. Because this life is short, people. I mean, I'm going to be 76, 77. I don't even know how old I am now. But I'll tell you what, I'm 80. I'll still be preaching. If I'm 90, I'll still be preaching. I'll still be jumping around. My dad was like 90, 98, 99 years old. He died at 99 years old. And I didn't want to fight him then. Sold out to Jesus. That's the only way to go. And tonight, the invitation is given. What are you going to do about it? You going to sit there and just say, "Well, I slept it off." Listen, I'm telling you what we're playing. We ain't playing games here. This is not a game playing thing. This is life and death, eternity. This is not games. Everything that's in here is absolutely true absolutely true and we know one thing when we get to that judgment bar of God guess what's going to be open the books and we're going to be judged out not what your uncle said not what your aunt said 
not what your cousin said. It's going to be judged by what the Word says. Right. And so, brothers and sisters, you need to get your nose in the book. So you know what Jesus wants for your life. God wants you to be a Christian. God wants you to be sold out. God wants you to fire up. God wants you, because if this church ain't going to do it, God will raise somebody else up. He don't need you, you need Him. And you need to understand that. If we're going to fight the good fight, man, you look at everything that's gone. Where's faith going? We got all the stuff going on in this country. What's going on? Garbage stuff. That when I was a kid, it was unheard of. And look what's happening now. And you know why that's happening? Well, Simon Garfunkel had a song about it. Slip, slide, and away. Slip, slide, and away. <clears throat> most, of, most of churches are slip, sliding away from the Word of God. They're trying to entertain people, make people happy. I don't know about you, but I'd rather make Jesus happy. Tonight, if you're outside the body of Christ, if you've never obeyed the gospel as our piano player comes and organ player comes, we appreciate them so much. They've been such a blessing during the meeting. I meant to tell them that. Tonight is your day of salvation. Now, it might be marked on the calendar. That's the day you understood everything. I'll tell you a story about the truth of a barefoot view for there was a three-week meeting down in Georgia. And I mean, the guy preached his heart out, preached his heart out. And only one person came forward. And the guys were talking afterwards. And they said, well, we had a revival, but there's only one guy come, barefoot, beautiful. You know, we had come from a Poor home and that, and that's the only God we had. Barefoot Buford started 27 churches. That one little kid that grew up to be a raven evangelist. Never discount anybody. Never look down on anybody. I got a guy in Bible college now, Johnny. Johnny Belcher. And he's got so many things that he could give an excuse for. But that guy is preaching. And he's something else. I, in fact, I had my camp meeting and I said, Johnny, would you preach the camp meeting for us? Oh, Jimmy, will you want to let me come to you? Yeah, man, preach it. He's something else. But he's got all kinds of problems. But as far as physical problem, but he preached the word. Never discount anybody, brothers and sisters, in Christ. Tonight, if you're outside the body of Christ, you never obey that Jesus is the Christ, or believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, you never repent and change your own mind. That's where it's got to go. Change your mind, change your direction. Confess him before me, and I believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Not be ashamed of the gospel of Christ, and be immersed for the forgiveness of sin, receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, and then do something that a lot of people haven't. They've got wet, but they haven't got out and started walking in the newness of life. As we stand to sing our song invitation, if you have a need in your life, come, come and be changed. Make a difference in the kingdom. This is where it starts. It starts here. Don't start tomorrow. It starts tonight.